number 97, Jesus Saved, number 97 in the church hymnal. You would stand as we sing, number 97 in the church hymnal. Sunday at 6, Adam Ragsdale, missionary to Thailand, will be with us in the evening service. Uh, Wendell McCormick, continue to pray for him, and Michael Ronan, Sue Austin, and Patsy Cloud's father. Uh, continue to pray for all of our senior saints, those still not able to be with us for the next few weeks. Uh, thanks to all who came and brought food to the reception to honor our seniors last week. The church presented each senior with a new Bible. Brother Tim Renshaw gave a wonderful devotion encouraging them to continue in their faith as they begin the next phase of their lives. Please continue to pray for our seniors. We have a couple of thank you cards. Thank you to everyone who gave me a card at the senior recognition. Also, thank you for the prayers and support of Paula Potter. Thank you so much for all the kind words and support as I start the next step of my life. This has been home to me for the last six years, and I love each of you. Thank you for helping and leading me in the right direction. All these years, your prayers have helped me more than I could ever des describe. Tara Riddle. Any other announcement we need to make at this time? All right, then. We'll turn to number 310. Brother Tim's been...
teaching preaching on Wednesday night. You know the Lord's coming back. Yep. And I tell you, I left this past Wednesday night with a smile on my face. Yes, sir. Just, and you know, in, in, uh, in Thessalonians, this is First Thessalonians. It says comfort. First Thessalonians. That's a way we can comfort each other yes, just sir. by saying, "Hey, the Lord's coming back. Oh, yes. Hey, this is all fixing to be wound up, and we're going to be with the Lord forever." And it says we comfort each other with those right. words. That is comforting to know. So, number uh, three ten, if you would, in the church hymn, we'll sing that glad reunion day. Number three ten. <laughs>
before you, brother. No. <laughs> well, you know, you might be dead then. I'm gonna beat y'all. I'm gonna beat y'all. <laughs> Good turn. Turn to number 92. Number 92. Hey, that ought to make you smile. We're going to get out of here one day. <laughs> hey, things falling apart all around us, but praise God, we've got a home in glory. Amen. You ought to get excited about that this morning. I am. Just a little talk to Jesus. Number 92.
everybody here, you can have a seat. Sing some happy birthday. So. Miss Cat, it's good to see you and your husband. Oh yeah. Glad you all are here this morning. Wasn't she wasn't able to walk next last week, but we've been praying and she's up a walking. Good to have you in the house of the Lord. Um, but Tommy, good to see your boy, your little granddaughter. Got her picture hanging on my wall that she drew. Good to see them. Good to see you. Anyway, it's Brother Donald's birthday coming this week. And then Miss Jackie's birthday, I've been told, was last Friday. And so we need to sing happy birthday to Terry's them. Birthday. Terry's birthday? Well, hallelujah. Where'd he go? Oh, really? I knew he looked older today. <laughs> Sing happy birthday. said, uh, pray for Diane. That's Miss Louise Norris's daughter. She's having a scan this week on her whole body to see if she has cancer. So be praying for that. Also, Miss Louise asked prayer too because she is missing church, um, but she's worried about the coronavirus. Y'all be praying for them. It's good, to, it's good that we had four classrooms going Sunday. Church is slowly starting to come back to normal. And uh, for all the ones that are tuning in, we thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoy it today. But right now, I need two of my men to come down and let's take up our offering. All right, we need two men. I didn't look on the back to see whose time or whose, whose it was. Go ahead, pray, Brother Jack. Pray for the folks that can't come to church today. Yeah. Uh, I'm thankful for my daddy bringing me up the way I should have brought up. Amen. I'm thankful for the friends of the God, your father. And I pray that the children here today need to respect their daddies and mind their daddies. Oh, I do what their daddies tell them to. If there's any fathers here that's not praying to get on. There are kids up in the church and they're going to you, Lord. Please, God, help them, help them, Lord. Pray for this offering. Amen.
sang this song a, a few weeks ago on a Wednesday night, and Brother Chuck said if I didn't have nothing else, if, if I could sing it this morning. And um, just want you to know this morning that um, God will forgive you no matter what you've done or where you've been. All you gotta do is just ask. <clears throat>
of the Lord this morning. Y'all notice the, all the shoes up front? Hey Amen. Can y'all see the picture good? <clears throat> if I mess with it, I know I'll, you know me, I'll probably break it. So there's a daddy walking there and he's leaving footprints and it looks like a little girl's father and he then on the other one, the daddy's out there mowing grass and the little young one behind him with a little toy lawn, uh, lawnmower following him. I kind of like this stalk. <coughs> Y'all notice these? Yeah. These are David's kids. Mike, they still follow him. Not just their daddy. They follow their grandpa too. Yep. Or too long these little men's size shoes. I'll turn into men's size shoes. Amen. I like, I like that way that's set up this morning. Hey, daddies, your lives mean something. Yeah. And they mean something till, not till they graduate, not till they get married, but till God moves you on to heaven. Amen. Amen. And don't quit. And don't quit. Yes. My dad's been gone for 29 years. Amen. Missing every day. Yeah. And this song service just made me think I'm going to see him again. You're going to see him again. <laughs> You're going to see him again. Your daddy was a deacon at Rising Fund. Yeah. Yeah, well, when the Lord comes back, 
We've been studying on that. Yeah. He's coming with your daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I think about my daddy sitting at his feet. Oh, yeah. He's doing more than that. He's shouting at his feet, too. He's praising. He's having him a time of his life. Amen. I you know, you won't find this in the Bible, but it would tickle me to death if the Lord would reach down every once in a while and said to your daddy and say, yeah, she's in worship mode right now. <laughs> <laughs> they go to shout together again. <laughs> there's, there's lots of times I pray and tell him to tell him. You know? Yeah. I wonder today that your granddaughter got saved sitting back yonder. She come down and got <laughs> saved. I wonder if he leaned over to, to great grandpa and says, she's getting saved. I've answered your prayer. I think Amen. he was probably shouting about she and her got baptized too. Amen. So when that shouting goes on in the presence of the angels, don't you know that was they was having a time and he was having a time. Thank God for daddies that has walked the right path. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter six. Jeremiah chapter six. Find Jeremiah chapter 6, and then also find Proverbs chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. Miss Jackie, I, I forgot. Uh, you've been planning on this for a while, and I forgot. I forgot all about it. And I'm back there in my study for two days, fretting on trying to get a Father's Day message together. Dumb went home. I told Carol, I said, I just said, I said, I got nothing yet. Nothing. God ain't gave me nothing yet. And I didn't like that. I said, You know what that means? She said, Nothing. I said, Okay, just as long as you get it. <laughs> I'm wanting her to pray, you know. <clears throat> And I, I, I drive back from eating lunch and I park over here and I come inside and I go to my office, Jay comes there, you want to see what, what we, you know, and so what she done. And so I come out here and seen it and God says, there goes your message. And I said, hallelujah. I went back in there and just started, just started flowing. Daddy's pay attention this morning. I mean, mama, it, it works the same for you, but this is specially set up for daddy's day. I thank God. Let me say this. I thank God for my daddy. Very godly man. I've heard him pray over me. Failed him pray over me. Felt the tears drop on me. I mean literally drop on me. I heard my daddy pray that God would kill me while I was little if I wasn't going to be saved. So I'd go to heaven. He did too. And I heard it. That scared the snot out of me. Because <laughs> I wasn't saved then. I was too young. I, 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 but I heard him. I was five years old and he was praying that prayer God to take him. And he is just a cry. I thank God for my daddy. Oh, I seen him praise God in the middle of a, while we was building in the house. I seen him praise God in the woods while we was hunting. I seen him pull over on the side of the road and say, son, we got to pray right now. Right now. And man, we're on the highway. I knew, I, my daddy knew God. My daddy knew God so much that I thought that God was literally, and I know the Bible says this, so I, I know I'm being biblical, but as a little kid, it was to the next level. I thought God was daddy's personal friend. Best buddies. They were talked and walked together every day so when the Lord come and dealt with me and I mean this with all my heart that it was daddy's friend there wasn't nothing to be scared of he's daddy's friend if he's daddy's friend he's a pretty good person Amen. Brother Chuck, I'm telling you that's the truth and uh, I thank God for godly daddies y'all keep serving God to the last breath okay Jeremiah 6 16 says this Thus saith the Lord, Jeremiah 6, 16. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. Now you got to remember, the Lord is saying this. Stand ye in the ways yes. and see. Yep. So look, look around and ask 
for the old paths, yes. where is the good way and walk therein? Amen. You shall find rest for your souls. This is the sad part of that verse. But they said, we will not walk therein. These here is Miss Jackie's daddy's shoes. From everything I understand, godly man. I know every one of these shoes belong to somebody in the church. But let me just pick out one to make a point. Let's say, I don't know, I think these are Brother Leroy's, so I'm going to use Let's say this is just a worldly man. I was a worldly man. <laughs> he ain't no more. He ain't no more. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the Lord is saying, not me, not your daddy. He said, stand in the ways and see. <clears throat> and ask for the old paths. Yes. The good way. So here's the thing. If there's a bad way, I mean, if there's a good way, then there must be a bad way. And the Lord is saying that people are leaving paths in this walk of life. There is some good paths that some men has been making over the years. And there is some bad paths that the worldly, that ungodly, that sinners make. Theirs is usually wide because they're living it up. Theirs is usually straight and narrow. These look like they's all kind of fun things while there's beer cans on the side of their pathway. Cigarette butts and everything else. There's look like happy times. This one just an old, boring, straight path. And he says that you're supposed to stand yeah. and see. Yeah. Hey, kids, you're the ones that's supposed to be standing and see. My age is supposed to be looking at the paths that's already been made even before me. Yours is, I've already done past the start of your path. Uh, the path where you're at but I'm a little further down the road but I'm still needing some paths for the rest of the way out I'm supposed to be looking and I, and I see it I see the paths can I tell you this a path is only made by how it's been traveled many times not just one or two <laughs> traveling just walking somewhere a couple of times, Brother Tim, won't leave no path. It's got to be a place that you traveled a lot. Mm. Mm. Who makes the paths? So let's turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Yeah. Brother uh, Tommy was teaching out of Proverbs there for a long time. Ten years, two months, and three days. <laughs> and I think we got all the way to chapter eight or nine. Like that. Amen. He wasn't breaking down every word. He was breaking down every letter. We just learned some wisdom. Amen. Let me, let me read one that he actually went over. 416. Four, wait. 426 it says this ponder the paths ponder the path of whose feet we're supposed to be pondering the path that your feet make it didn't say ponder on your feet it said ponder the path and then it tells you who's making this path. Your feet. Daddy's listen to me. Your feet, your life, 
has been making paths. Your kids is coming up behind you and they're looking at the paths that your feet have been making. I'm going to say this. It matters where you walk. <coughs> it matters how you live. It matters where you go. Say, it's my life. I can do what I want. Yeah, the problem is somebody's watching. Somebody's going to stand in the ways. Uh, they're going to stop for a little while and look around at all the ways. And if you've been walking your path right, that good old path, they just might say, I want that old path. Yeah. I, let me bring it down. Brother Chuck likes to bring in these foster kids. I think they're precious kids, especially that one. And Brother Chuck is walking, and Miss Stevie is walking the path, and these kids are learning the paths that they walk. Do you have some good paths you made? Some of y'all graduated school. Have you left some paths in your schoolhouse that people know how to find God by yeah. the paths you made? Well, they ain't got a clue. That is, what about your footprint, your path that your footprints has been making? Have they all been good paths? Have they all been good ways? David? Yeah. When these feet are following yours, are they always in the right path? What are they learning? from the paths you'll cut. Where do they lead to? Where's the end place of the paths that you're leading? It's kind of a sobering thought, ain't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. But shouldn't we ask that? Shouldn't we ask that to ourselves this morning? The Bible says to ponder the path of thy feet and let all the ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Amen. I, I want to give you some paths that I'm thankful my daddy gave me. Let me give you this one. Let me ask this question like this. That is, have you been making a pathway to the house of God? Is there a clear pathway to the house of God? Has your feet been faithful that our children, that your children, that your grandchildren, that your great-grandchildren can find the church house even though you're not on the path or you're not leading the way? Has that path been so worn out that there's a clear path to the house of God? Or do you come when, it, when you feel like it? Uh, when, when it? When it's a pretty day. I mean, do they know that coming to the house of God, Daddy, Grandpa, Great Grandpa, when, when everything just seems right in your life or just when you feel like it? Or is God good enough to you that you want to go to the house of God and your grandchildren and your children know uh, that he's worthy of walking that path to go to the house of God? David said in Psalms 122, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Our feet shall stand within the gates. Oh, Jerusalem. He didn't say unto, by the way. He said into. He just didn't go to the outside of the house. He knew that he was getting inside while he wanted to find God. Yeah. Amen. Uh, does your pathway to the house of God just lead to the outside things of God? Or is it all the way on the inside? Amen. I well, I'm there. I'm going to get in. I'm not going to get out. Amen. How far does your pathway go to the house of God? 
How well has it peaked down? Has the rocks been thrown out and kicked out that the trail might be easy for your kids? Can I tell you this? He said, I was glad our feet go where our heart takes us. Does your kids know your heart's in that pathway to the house of God? Is it worthy enough for you to get there? The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And then it says this, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The Lord's coming back. We need church more, not less. This thought, this old thought that people used to have Sunday morning's good enough, you will not find that thought in the Bible. Amen. Yeah, I heard what people say. Well, in the olden days, they only had church one time a day. Yeah, but it would last four hours a day, too. Yeah. So let's go to one service a day, and let's go to four hours a day then. I'm all for that. We'll eat, and then we come back inside and sing and preach again. Amen. I'm all for that. I like that thought. You got a path, Daddy, that leads to the house of God? If you don't, I'd start making one. Don't say it's too late. No, if you're 99, it ain't too late. I'd start beating a pathway. I'd start making a pathway to the house of God. Listen, my daddy, y'all know me. I was, I was <clears throat> born in California, and um, <laughs> my daddy was an Air Force man. He started going to a Bible college out there and met my mom, and they got married. And so because of him being an Air Force man, I was born out there. But can I tell you, he took me to church when I was eight, when I lived out in California. Can I tell you this? The first Sunday after I was born, Mama couldn't make it, but Daddy took me to church. Amen. I'm thankful for what he's taught me when we moved from California trying to get back to folks and uh, daddy thought that the job situation might be better in Callahan so we pulled up in Callahan, Florida and we lived down there for about a year. Can I tell you that he found the house of God for him, for his family to go to the very first Sunday we was there? When we moved from Callahan after that year and back to folks in Georgia which where he was his stomping ground and that's where he raised me all my life. Can I tell you the first thing he did was take me back to the house of God in folks in Georgia. No matter what town we lived in, no matter where God moved us, Daddy found the house of God. And because of that, because of the path that I, Daddy, put me on when I was so young, can I tell you when I lived in folks and I got married and I started me a family, the first place I took my family to the house of God. When we moved from there to Blairsville because of that, uh, can I tell you the first thing that we did and, and, and when we come up to look to see if God was wanting us there, the first thing that we did was look for where God was going to feed us in the house of God. Amen. And then when we moved to Trenton, it was because God was calling me into pastoring at the house of God. Can I tell you, daddies, make a pathway. There ain't one. Make a pathway. Stomp on it. If you don't think you have many days, stomp on that pathway to make sure that you make that path because you got somebody coming up behind you. Yeah. Be faithful to the house of God. Let me give you another one. Do you have you a pathway into the presence of God? Yeah. Does your kids know that my daddy is walking on that pathway? He's fixing to meet the presence of God. I've seen him when he got there. I knew daddy boy would be sitting back there. When I say back there, daddy kept us on the second row. I was too mean of a kid to go any further back. <laughs> I got whoopings on the second row, man. I got beatings when I was on the back row. <laughs> so my daddy's on the second row. And I knew daddy. I could hear daddy during the service, brother. And if he went to snotting and crying, and I could hear him go, mm, 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 oh, what, oh, mm, I knew that he was on the pathway, that he was in the presence of God. I knew.
knew that God was getting him there where he was a fixing to meet God. And I remember, boy, it'd come time for altar call sometime. Uh, Daddy would get up and start crawling his way to the altar. And then sometimes he could only make it as far as the front seat. Man, he would pile up there on the front seat and I could hear him a-weeping. I could hear him a-crying. And I knew that he was in the presence of his God. But I knew that pathway way before. I knew it was coming. I knew Daddy was getting touched on the pathway. Your kids know about your pathway in the presence of God? Not just a pathway to the house of God. And that's a good place for it to start. But I'm telling you, is there a pathway to the presence of God? Yes. It's a different walk when you start knowing that you're coming to the presence yes. of God. Why, is it a different walk? Oh yeah. yeah, oh Moses is out there and all of a sudden there's a bush set on oh, fire yes. but yet it's not being yes. consumed. And he says, I shall turn and look at this bush and being on fire that had been consumed. And as he turned to go, oh man, the voice of God said, ha oh, ha, oh, don't come no further. Amen. The path needs to change a little bit. I've loosed them shoes. Yeah. I could tell in the middle of the service, yeah. boy, daddy's a spiritual shoes was a coming and old shoes was a coming off and he was walking in the presence of the Lord barefoot. Yeah, the path looks different when yeah. you got toe prints and not shoe prints. Amen. Joshua was the same way in Joshua chapter 5. Uh, he was standing there and all of a sudden the angel of the Lord showed up and Joshua was fixed and he said, oh no. You need to loose them shoes off your feet. The place where you're standing is holy. Why? Because God's there and he's in the midst. You got to strip yourself of the pride and get down to nothing but you and God and you'll see yourself small. You'll see him big and holy. I mean, boy, you'll start weeping. Uh, you'll start begging God to forgive you of your sin. I say you. He's standing there and all of a sudden he was in the presence of the God Almighty. And all of a sudden, boy, the first thing he started doing, woe is me. I'm a yeah. nothing. I'm a nothing, man. God, you're everything. Can I tell you, the pathway, the pathway to the presence of God ought to be a little different than them other paths. Hey, Amen. That is... Ponder your pathway this morning. You got some pathways that your kids can follow into the presence of God. I'd say that was just a little more perfect. A little more. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Yes that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the help of need. Man, I hope that I'm using that pathway to the presence of the Lord more than the devil is. The devil shows up there too. Yeah. Job, he walked right into the presence of the Lord. The devil did. Do you know that's your place? He couldn't even speak till God directed him to. We can speak as soon as we walk in. Amen. Amen. Daddies, I want to ask you another one. Have you been making a pathway for the to the service of God for your kids? Well, or we just come to church, walk out the back door, but we don't do nothing else for God. So your kids don't learn to do nothing for God because we ain't been making a pathway for the service of God. Well, what do you mean, Brother Tim? I'm supposed to teach a Sunday school class. Uh, there's no Sunday school class open. Uh, what am I supposed to do for the service of God? And do you knock on doors? Yeah. I do you witness. I do you testify. Do you sing a song for the Lord? I do you pray to the Lord. Do you do the things that God wants you to do? Do you do the things that God is desiring in your heart to do? And is your kid seeing that pathway where you're trying to serve God the best of your ability? Or they just see the pathway 
to a job, to a work, to try to gain money? Yeah. Do you have any pathways into the service of the Lord? Do you ever come down to the house of God and just get around the altar and pray? Do you got a pathway where you just come down and maybe you clean up around the house of God and pick up the trash and your kids look at you and say, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm just going to go down there and kind of do something for God. I'm going to clean up the yard a little bit. I'm going to wash the windows a little bit. I'm just going to do whatever I can do for the house of God so the Lord might be pleased. Do you have any pathways to the service of God? Isaiah chapter 6, we mentioned it a while ago. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8 and 9. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And God said, go. You ever ask the Lord, Lord, I'm just sitting here. I'm ready to go and make a pathway. Lord, you just want me to go? I'll go. That's not for everybody. That's evangelists. That's missionaries. And that's pastors. Let me go along with this. Matthew chapter 28, and verse 19 and 20, talking about any person that's ever been saved by the grace of God. He says... Go ye therefore, not just preachers, not just teachers, uh, not just missionaries, not just apostles. It says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. It's our job to do service for the Lord. Daddies, do you have any pathways to the service of God? Your kids are following. Amen. Brother David, this one yours, right? <clears throat> now this one, because it's church shoes, we represented this to be to the saved man that's making good paths. Now, we know Brother Leroy's saved. But we, but we said these were the lost man's shoes. Dirty, scruffed up, still in his old sin. David, this is your little one. Which path do you want him to take? Yeah. I mean, if you had to come put his shoes inside the shoe, that you want him to take. Would you want me to drop him in these? Why do we take it so little? Because one day he's going to choose his path. That's right. There's coming a day, David, he's going to stand in the way. He's going to see. And he's going to say, yeah, daddy's made some good paths, but he didn't look like he enjoyed that path he was making. It was all duty. I don't know. David knows I'm not picking on when he played ball, it looked like he had more fun. I want that. He never enjoyed church. He never got in. But when we went fishing, he got in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Think about it. When he was at church, he never even said a peep. Never wept, never nothing. But boy, when he lost that big bass, he'd cry a mile. I remember when he bought that truck, boy, he shouted and rubbed all on that thing and cleaned it all up. But when he got his new Bible, he never opened it. So I'm going to pick this. just looks like it brings more fun. Do you have a pathway of service to God? Because there's some little shoes coming up behind you. You can't pick two. It don't ever work. I'll give you the last one. Daddies, grandpas, great grandpas, have you made a pathway to the Lord that your kids might be saved? Let me say it like this. 
Have you made a pathway to the cross? Do they know that you got saved? Do you keep going back to that stone of remembrance that God told Joshua to set up after they crossed over into the promised land? He said, set up a stone that you might not forget what I've done for you and how I brought you out of Egypt. Is there a pathway, Brother Tim, that, that your kids know that where you keep going back, oh yeah, you can't go back and get saved again. And we're not talking about that. Where you go back to that spot and you say, yeah, God, I remember the day that you saved me here and you washed me up. You got rid of my sin. And I just never want to forget. About a week later, boy, you go back to that spot and finally they come up to you and say, Daddy, why do you keep talking about that so much? I just want to let y'all know what God did for me. I just testify on it. I know everybody's tired of hearing about it, but I was on the second row of Calvary Baptist Church in Homeland, Georgia, when God convicted my heart and I caught up as an eight-year-old boy, I come around the side, this side, and hit the altar on where they had two on the left side, about two foot off the end. God met me there. I never want to forget it, and I keep going back to that spot in my heart. Have you made a path to where they know about it as good as you did? So that they might go to that same spot and get saved? Have you made a pathway to salvation for your kids? You remember that story in Mark chapter 2, verse 4? There was four men bringing a sick man to see Jesus. He couldn't get on his own. So, boy, they was picking him up and they was toting him and they couldn't get in. They tried. They pushed. Well, that's good enough, so we'll just go back home. We just won't worry about it no more. Not when it's your kid. And so then they got up on top of the roof and they pushed the man up. And the other man, two men, was pulling. Two men was pushing. And they get him up on the roof and they said, Now what are we going to do? We're going to tear this roof off because this man's lost and needs some help. He needs to get to God. Yeah. You said, no, I thought he had palsy. No, his main problem is he needs to be saved. Yeah, sure. You go back and read the story. You know what the Lord told him? He said, he said, your sins are forgiven. God knew he needed a, a help uh, from going to hell more than he needed to walk. Amen. Are you ripping off a roof so that your kids might be able to get to, get to Jesus Christ? Romans chapter 5, not Romans chapter 10. <clears throat> the Bible says this. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For whosoever shall call on the Lord Jesus, would you please save me? Thou shalt be saved. Amen. How then shall they call on him? Now listen. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Daddy, can I tell you, you're the preacher of your home? Right. Grandpa, you're the preacher of your home. Great grandpa, you're the preacher of your home. And the Bible says, how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? Now get this. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Hey, daddies. Hey, grandpas. Have you been walking a path where you're preaching to your kids? Have you been walking a path uh, where you're preaching to your grandkids? How can they call on the Lord if they don't hear it? I've made some paths, brother, that ain't very good. But I sure am hoping I made some that they want to be on. Yeah. <clears throat> because I've had little kids following me. And now i got grandkids, three of them, three boys, a following. And I don't want to see the pathway quit, brother Jimmy. I want to see that pathway all the way to where I'm crossing Jordan. Amen. Amen. 
I don't want to see a pathway that gets about 10 feet from the river and just quit because God ain't good enough. I want this pathway to lead all the way home. How about you, daddies? Uh, amen. Would you please stand? On your feet this morning, are you wearing these? Are you wearing these? Is there some place in your pathways where it quits being a, a shoe print and becomes a toe print? Is every time that pathway? Starts looking different to the presence of God. That is, I thank God for you. Well, let's don't quit. The world has got so bad. People killing people everywhere. People rioting everywhere. Protesting everywhere. Virus tearing us up. Storms coming up everywhere. Record number. Earthquakes just just crazy. It's crazy out there. If there's ever a time that we need to make some better paths, it's right now. Amen. The Bible said in Hebrews that we need to make our path straight for the lame that's coming up from behind. Don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right. We need to be making some straight paths. Daddies. How good is your pants? How to lay some good trials. Lord, we thank you for this day. I thank you for the godly daddies that you've placed in amongst us. Lord, I thank you for the men of God that you put in my pathway. Lord, they beat the pathway before me, made it a little easier. God, I pray that you'd help me to keep blazing that path. Lord, if I see something grow up in it that's going to try to overtake the path, that I go stomp it out before it gets started. Thank you, Lord, for the ones that you've put around me to come up my paths. Lord, help me to keep my eyes on you, but knowing that somebody's coming up from behind. Help us, Lord, to serve you better than we ever had. Touch the daddies, touch the men, God. They'll have a backbone to stand when the world's telling them not to. <clears throat> Lord, while the world is raging and sin is all around, they stand in confidence knowing what's at the end of the pathway. Thank you for blessing us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. But everybody sit down except for the daddies. Will you stay standing? Daddies. Just daddies. Stay standing. Who's the oldest daddy? I didn't ask this. I didn't ask this for the uh, for the women because you get beat up. <laughs> so, as far as the daddy, who's old? Anybody above seventy? Okay, we got we got about four right now. What about anybody above seventy-five? Okay, and just one. Oh, anybody above eighty? Brother Donald, you. How old are you, Brother Donald? Uh, I'll be 78 tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who's the youngest daddy? I ain't got no special gifts, y'all, for that. But who's the youngest daddy? Anybody below 25? Below 30? Below 40? Want a son? I know that the rest this little girl walked the right path. The days are short. That's right. Keep a path, a good path, a good way. Stomp down that she might know where daddy's going. Good to have you. Okay, kids, I need everybody, all the teenagers, all the kids, I want everybody to come give one of these gifts to every daddy that is here. Okay, kids, teenagers, come give one to every daddy that's standing. Got it. 
daddy here and you're 40 and he's 50, come get him a come get him a gift. Heavenly daddy. If you get a gift and you'll have a seat, that way we'll know who's got one and who don't. take one to your daddy. Will you do that? Anybody that you know that one of our senior saints that's not here because of the coronavirus, if you want to take one to them, I wish that you would get it and take it to them. We've got Brother Battles, Brother Wendell, we got uh, Brother John. I mean, there's, they're all over um, and you want to take it, then please come get one and make sure they get a cup. Anybody got anything they want to say to about their day? All right. Let's close out in prayer. Lord, today we thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for us. We thank you for the spiritual daddies that you give us. Lord, just walk them paths before us. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be faithful to what path you put us on. Lord, I pray that you get all the glory out of our lives. Give the daddies a good day today. Help them to enjoy their family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.